Amen. Palm Sunday is this beginning of the stories that is heard throughout all of the Gospels. Right? There's many times that we have stories that are not in other Gospels. Like a few weeks ago, we had the story of the prodigal son. Right? The story of the prodigal son exists only in the Gospel of Luke. But you will find a version of the entrance into Jerusalem in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You will find a version of Jesus' death in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You don't find a version of Jesus' birth in all four Gospels. Which seems to tell me that this story is probably one of the more important ones that we know. Which is why I take the time each Lent to go through these eggs with these kids. So at some point, one of them is going to come up on the first Sunday in Lent and just tell us the whole story. And we're all just going to sit here amazed because they're going to know it. And that's what it's about. But what was the first egg? When we sat down here with the kids, what was the first egg? A donkey. What did our story say this morning? Is a colt a donkey? Is a donkey a colt? A donkey isn't a colt, but a colt could be a donkey. Because what is a colt? It's a baby what? Or donkey. <laughs> a colt is either a baby horse a ba- or a baby mule or a baby donkey. Right? A colt is an ambiguous term that means many different things. So a colt is kind of like a square is a quadrilateral, but a quadrilateral isn't necessarily... A, sorry, I brought math in, kids. <laughs> I just don't get that. That's just funny. So, okay. But this story this morning, we read it in the Gospel of Luke. What's missing? What's, who said that? What's missing? Where, where does it say in your reading this morning that they waved palms? It doesn't. So why, why do you have this? This thing. And why were we waving it? Why were we walking in here like a bunch of weird people waving these things, singing these songs? What else was missing before we get to why we're doing this? What else was missing? Something else to do with that song and waving. Say louder. Hosanna. Hosanna. Luke doesn't have the crowd shouting Hosanna either. There's no palms, and there's no mention of the crowd saying anything about Hosanna at all. And the most interesting thing to this is we read these readings each year on Palm Sunday. You will read out of the the lectionary series that we do, you will read Matthew, Mark, and Luke on Palm Sunday each year. As long as I'm your pastor here, there's somebody else that might change because today is Palm Passion where you could read the Passion story. So, but... You read one of these versions of the story. And in each one of these versions, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, there is no mention of palms at all. Mark says the leaves of the field, that the crowd around him gathered up leaves from the field and started waving them, which just kind of looks like a, right? If you let your grass go for a while. (laughs) Hopefully you don't have neighbors that are close because they might call you or come over and cut it for you, right? Um, So Mark says leaves of the field. They picked up the leaves of the field and started waving them. Matthew says they took green branches. Which could be palms. Other other congregations, sometimes you have branches of palms that are like there's some pictured in your bulletin of palm branches. And that could, it could have been palm branches. But Matthew's not specific to say palm branches. It's not about the palm branch. And Luke, as we see, shows them throwing cloaks, their coats on the ground, right? They took off their coats and threw their coats on the ground. There's no mention of any kind of greenery at all. The Gospel of John, the Gospel that we'd never read during Palm Sunday, is the only Gospel that says anything about palms. Because when we get to this week, right, this is Holy Week. When we get to this week, John is the Gospel we normally turn to. 
Because it is the most theological. But it's also the last written. Which means some of the details might have been embellished by the community. So how do we know which version is right? Right? There's four different versions of Jesus entering the holy city. Some of them have the crowd shouting, Hosanna. Some of them have the crowd shouting, Blessed is the King, peace in the highest heaven and glory. Which one's right? How many of you have ever witnessed an accident? Along with other people, witnessed the same accident. Have you ever talked to those people after the accident? Did your version of what happened actually match their version? Probably not. If I were to to ask people after worship this morning what I said up here, I'm going to get a different version from each person that I ask. Because we hear and see things differently, right? The gist of this story is not about who's got it right in which gospel. It's not about Luke's account, Luke's encounter where he has the crowd throwing their cloaks down, having the disciples go and get this donkey and throwing their coats on it and then throwing coats on the ground and then shouting, blessed is the king, peace in the highest heaven. Because to Luke, peace is the most important thing. That's why Luke looks at peace. But the point of this story is not about palm branches or who has it right. Because when it comes right down to it, none of us have it right. What this Sunday is about, what this whole week is about, but specifically today, is about palms. Everybody's got two. Unless you lost a hand. Right? We all got two. And look at all of the times in this story where palms were used. Jesus went with his disciples down from Bethpage and Bethany. And he started into the holy city to go to celebrate a festival. And he told two of his disciples to go into a nearby village. And to us, you'll find there when you go into the village, you'll find a donkey. Untie it, bring it to me because I need it. The, the disciples went in. They used their palms to gather this donkey. To bring it to Jesus. When they brought it to Jesus, what did they do? They put their cloaks on it with their palms. And then they placed Jesus upon the donkey, right? It says that. Not Jesus didn't climb on the donkey. It says that they placed him on it. So they picked him up and put him on the donkey with their palms. Then they threw their cloaks on the ground with their And then they were shouting and waving their hands. Does it say that? <coughs> They began to praise God joyfully. Well, you think if they're praising joyfully, right? That includes some raising baby. Okay, we're Lutherans, so we're not. <laughs> That's my Pentecostal days coming out, I guess. I don't know. Right? But you think if they're, they're raising hands and, and praising God, they're saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. They're using their palms. And later on this week, we're going to see more palms. When? On Thursday night, when Jesus does what? He takes off his outer robe, he ties a towel around his waist, and he washes the feet of the disciples. He uses his palms to wash their feet. And here's a little hint. Somebody's feet gets washed that we talked about up here this morning. Who's there when the feet washing is done? All twelve. Right. Judas is there. Judas' feet are washed by Jesus, the one who hands him over. Jesus washed his feet. And again on Friday, we see palms again. Where? Two that are outstretched, and then many that are doing things that we don't necessarily want to talk about. Because with his hands being outstretched, somebody had to do what? Put him there. After he's killed, palms bring him off the cross. If you listen to the, to the story in the Gospel of John, where it says that Joseph of Arimathea and another disciple and Nicodemus went 
they removed him from the cross. Their palms removed him from the cross. Their palms wrapped him in the linen cloth. Their palms carried him to that tomb. And then the palms closed that tomb up. It's not about bringing them. It's not about means of people. But it's about palms. What someone has done for you to give you a life in which you can use your palms to show love to everyone, to show the devotion that one man had, to follow through on a plan that he wanted to back out of. The one spot that I missed of palms being used on Thursday night was after dinner. Whose palms were used pressed tightly together, asking for another way? Let that not my way. Let your will. So let us use our palms to show the love that was shown to us so that everyone